everyone. Today is Native American Ministries Sunday. You have a flyer about it in your boat. <laughs> yeah, I scare myself every time with that. And a giving envelope. This is one of the six Sundays that we um, are receiving an offering. Uh, so uh, give what you can, and you can just put those little envelopes in the plates if you want to. If you want to take and write a check and come back next week, you can do that as well. Several announcements. Um, Project Linus meets tomorrow morning. Um, lay leadership is um, Tuesday at 7. Uh, it won't be a very long meeting. We just need to discuss a couple of things. Um, remember the memorial service for Ruby is um, this coming Saturday at 11. Um, I met with the brothers and sister uh, to do a little planning for the service. And we won't be asking for other people to speak then, but rather to share uh, during the um, lunch that follows. But if you have something you would like me to say in the service, please write that down. You can email me, call me, text me, message me. Put it in your mailbox in front of your house? You can do that too. Okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to have a few stories uh, for my remarks as well. I've got some. But, um, and then next Sunday is another... Uh, Sunday that we are observing that's out of the ordinary, it's Earth Day. It's not a special offering or anything like that. It's just a reminder that we were given creation to be good stewards of. And um, hopefully we will uh, have nice weather for that as well. Are there any other announcements that I don't have? I have tickets with me for the Carol Sanders concert May Saturday night, May 5th, and Sunday afternoon, May 6th. Anyone else? I see our boxes back there, our bags, baskets are getting full. That's good. Keep them coming. Okay. If that's all the announcements we have this morning, I'm going to turn it over to Pat for the praise music. Good morning. Good morning. Since this is Native American Sunday, Pastor Peggy asked me a few weeks ago to pick songs that have to do out of the hymnal that have to do with Indian Native American heritage. I am one half monogam Indian. My grandmother and grandfather on my mother's side were full blooded. I'm a little white right now because I haven't been out in the sun a lot, but I am. And the first one is 191 in the blue hymnal, not in the red and blue. Jesus loves me. Verses 1 through 3. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Second one is number 78. And it's printed. Print out. 
Thomas Hallelujah. And we're going to that's going to play it once, and I'll sing it along as she plays it, and then we're all going to sing it twice.
So I guess I said opening prayer, that wasn't the opening prayer. This is the opening prayer, and you'll find it on page 379 in the United Methodist Town. Prayer to the Holy Spirit. O great Spirit, whose breath gives life to the world, and whose voice is heard in the soft breeze, we need your strength and wisdom. Cause us to walk in beauty. Give us eyes ever to behold the red and purple sunset. Make us wise so that we may understand what you have taught us. Help us learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. Make us always ready to come to you with clean hands and steady eyes, so that when life fades like a fading sunset, our spirits may come to you without shame. Today we start with the Psalter. The Psalter is Psalm 8. If you want to follow along, it's the blue hymnal. Please rise for the gospel. 
comes from the 24th chapter of Luke, 36, the last half of 36 through 48, and again it's the new Revised Standard Version. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms will be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be uh, proclaimed in his name to all all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Thus ends the gospel. We give thanks to God and pray that we understand what it is we're supposed to do. The Gloria.
be group one. Everybody else will be group two. Okay? We're going to sing a line. You're going to repeat it. We're going to go right on. We're going to do the round. A little percussion. We'll sing through two times. Okay? Ready to start? hospital in um, Virginia and they um, performed the surgery on Friday um, it was his neck so they go in by by the front of his neck and they're able to take care of the herniated disc um, he is on crate rest for the next six to eight weeks which is going to be vital for him um, for his recovery challenging for his parents because we are used to taking him everywhere and you know just like hanging out with Henry, but um, not more importantly, but just as importantly, as this has been going on, we've reached out to so many people, I'll, I'll even say especially in the workplace because they're with me every day, and the prayers and the love and the support have just been so overwhelming. Um, and just to be that blessed, that people realize how important Henry is to us and how important Henry is because God created him and brought him to us. And we have people and churches in Tennessee praying for Henry because that's where he came from. Um, it is just so fabulous to be a Christian and to experience that Christian love. And I do ask for continued prayers because Henry's got a long road ahead of him, but he has um, a great chance of a full recovery um, with some restrictions, but very doable. And he is just 
such a sweet, sweet spirit. So I thank all of you and I ask for your prayers. I'm sorry that was a little long, but he's that important. So I think I announced this a little back, while back. Um, Elise, our youngest, is headed to the West Coast um, permanently, uh, we think. And Patty and she are driving to the West Coast, uh, leaving tomorrow morning. Uh, Mother-daughter bonding time, which I'm sure Patty will be ready to come home after two weeks. <laughs> uh, the prayers are for me because I'm going to be a bachelor for two weeks, uh, and uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to eat dinner, quite frankly. <laughs> Oh, if that wasn't a begging floor, I would have heard that. You'd be a pop cat. We need to um, ask prayers for Nancy. She is not doing well at all. She's having problems. She has um, a lot of fluid in her breast area. She's been going to um, therapy like almost every, I guess every day. But um, they keep telling her that um, it is from maybe from the radiation that she had. Both doctors are, are saying that, but she is just in so much pain, and she will not let them give her other than Tylenol or something like that. And I said, well, you may need to get something stronger. So keep her in our prayers, please. And they're not all opioids. Opioids, if that's what she's yeah, concerned about. Yes. yes. Tell her we'll pray for her stubborn woman that she is. Yeah. Sherry. Today is, today is the viewing for um, Ruthie's sister. She passed away on Thursday afternoon. And tomorrow is the service down in Bethany. And then there's a private family burial on Tuesday. So that's why Bob and Ruthie are not here. They're down in Bethany. Her sister's name is Lois. Lois Radcliffe. Mm -hmm. And there may be some folks from the church going. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going. Sherry's going to be so. Um, it's a, it's a long drive down to Bethany Beach, but um, thank you for supporting her and for representing Emory. So I have a happy announcement. Um, I know all of you, a lot of you know, uh, I frequently talk about my friend Sharon, and she is visiting me today from Tennessee and has had home to many places, but I'm just really delighted to have her here, and I hope you all will welcome her. Anyone else? <clears throat> well, continue to pray for all the folks that we've been praying for. Um, Ruth Chrysler um, is more confused than before and a little more weak in her legs, um, so she could use some uh, prayer support, um, among others. Is she home? Yes, she's at home. Um, she likes visitors. Call ahead first. You may need to call several times together. If she's not near the phone, by the time she gets up and gets to it, it's gone through the full system. Um, don't take her anything healthy. She likes chocolate. That's a direct quote. And she doesn't care if it's milk or dark. Right. She prefers the dark. <laughs> Y'all got that? She prefers the dark. Um, we're just trying to get her to eat no matter what it is. So get a few pounds on that skinny little body. Any others? Then let us continue in our worship as we pray to God and then join together in the prayer um, that is our Lord's. Let us pray. Holy well, we, One, we come here this morning. Um, seeking to be supporters of a whole nation of your people that often get forgotten. Help us to understand that when we're called to be there and to share the good news with everyone, it means everyone. Help us to reach out the best we can. May our offering this day for them be a blessing. We pray for each of our folks who are suffering in so many different ways. We pray for Henry and for his parents. We pray for Ruth um, Chrysler and her struggles. We pray for Ruthie and her sister Lois's family as they say their goodbyes. We pray, Lord, that all of the folks who are um, 
part of this congregation might know how you love them through each one of us. Teach us how to be your heart and hand in this world. And in our worship today, open our hearts and our minds to hear the word about Native Americans, to hear how it is we have been and how it is as church we are changing. In Christ's holy name, we pray the prayer that our Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please <clears throat> prepare to return to God a portion of our blessings with the ushers come forward.
My coffee cup is here because, as you heard, my allergies are getting into full um, blast. <laughs> um, so I may need it. I call this sermon Proclaim to All Nations because that's what we are supposed to be doing. And yet sometimes we kind of fall down on that and um, forget about different groups of people. The reason Native American Ministries Sunday came to be was that um, the church finally understood its complicity in some of the things that happened to Native Americans and wanted to make amends. And they thought the best way to that would be to strengthen the leadership of the Methodist Church. So uh, any offerings that we send in today will go to those purposes. Um, the flyer and the envelope uh, were in your bulletin. This is the third of the six of the special offerings we're asked to receive. And um, I think it was probably me with a few other people who decided that this year we would do all six of them just to um, see what we could do. And the outpouring has been tremendous on the uh, other uh, two before this. Um, it's an opportunity for second mile giving. Uh, that means you go a little bit um, beyond the first mile where you thought you could walk to and, and um, add a little bit more to your offering. Um, <clears throat> in the sermon today, we will be venturing into indigenous cultures to uh, experience some of what it's like in that culture in a world that does not fully accept them as equal. You see a few things on the altar that um, uh, Diane has been able to acquire from various peoples. Um, the necklaces on the uh, Bible match the necklace that I'm wearing that was given to me by a Native American family at Pine Grove. We ended up with seven families of Native Americans um, because one told one told one told one and they figured out it was a safe place to be. Um, we can do that too, although that's not the aim. Um, I want you to think of a time when you felt left out. Um, when um, maybe when you were in school, somebody told you not to sit at the cool lunch table where the cool kids sat. And maybe you wanted to be in a fraternity or sorority and you didn't get in because you didn't quite fit their criteria. Maybe you didn't get a job promotion you thought you deserved because somebody else looked different, acted different, and got the job. Have you ever been in a store where you're followed around because they think you're going to steal something? That happens to people. Have you ever sat at a table at Starbucks and had police call? and were arrested because they sat there waiting for a friend and they hadn't bought anything yet, so they were reported as trespassers. That happened this weekend to some black folks in Philadelphia, I believe it was. Now, Starbucks has apologized, but the police haven't. They said they did everything right. And maybe that's protocol. But something's wrong when we can look at people and judge them by their appearance. And like Pat said, he's not quite as dark as he would be had he been out in the sun. And he doesn't have that long black hair to show for it either. <laughs> it's his father's fault. Okay. Anyway. If you've ever been in a situation where somebody hurls insults at you just because of who you are, um, perpetrated violence against you because of who you are, that's how Native Americans have been treated ever since. Now I might make people mad, but ever since the white man invaded their land. Now, people who yell about immigrants, you think about the fact that they're all immigrants unless they're Native American, or at least part Native American. 
How do Native Americans experience discrimination in early life? A poll by NPR, my favorite radio station, National Public Radio, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health did a survey to determine the extent of discrimination against five major ethnic and racial groups in America, including the Native community. It finds that Native Americans have a very high rate of discrimination in everyday life. More than a third of Native Americans and their family members have experienced slurs and violence, and close to a third have faced discrimination in the workplace and when interacting with the police. Native Americans who live in majority Native American areas, euphemistically known as what? Reservations. Reservations are significantly more likely to experience this kind of discrimination. The poll finds that um, Native Americans are highly discriminated against. Have many of you thought about that? I certainly hadn't until I started doing some research. The poll provides results from police interaction, job applications, healthcare, racial slurs, and even more. And to me, the truth is both eye-opening and appalling. And it helps us understand some things that have happened in our nation recently. In our scripture, Jesus often called his disciples to come away to a different place. Recall the story of Jesus calming the seas. Jesus steps into a rough but finely crafted boat. I have no idea if it was finely crafted, but it had to be the care of Jesus. The exhausted Jesus falls asleep as the disciples point the bow toward the other side, the bow toward the other side of the lake. During transfiguration, Jesus had gone aside when the change came over him. And remember, after the Last Supper, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and the disciples fell asleep. And of course, the crucifixion and the resurrection crossed all barriers and changed the world. Christ is risen, indeed. Now, for us and for Jesus, that other side changes. It's found with the unclean, the unknown, a place of discomfort. The people who live there are different from us. And boundaries keep us from going there. The boundary is the sea, the boundary is fear, the boundary is culture. Jesus crosses boundaries. He heals a Roman centurion slave, asks for a drink of water from a Samaritan woman, travels in dangerous territory, and extends mercy despite laws that would preclude him from doing so. So the question becomes, where is the other side in our lives? What are the boundaries we are called to cross? Paying attention to another culture offers both to us, and today it is the peoples who populated this land first. The Reverend Dwayne M. Harris, pastor of Auburn United Methodist Church in Michigan, told about his first trip out west. He said, I was anxious to see the land of the Plains Indians. He remembered the stories and the deep spirituality of the Native Americans who understood themselves and still understand themselves to be part of the circle of life. The earth is their mother giving birth to them and all of life. And never before had Harris seen such a vast ocean of grass. Rolling hills with no power lines no telephone poles, no fences, just open plains as far as the eye could see. He began to understand Lame Deer, a Sioux medicine man who described the agony Native Americans felt as Caucasians occupied the Western Plains. For generations, Native Americans had enjoyed freedom to roam and hunt, no boundaries. And all that changed when property lines began to carve up the land. 
Today is Native American Ministry Sunday, and God calls us to venture to the other side, break down some barriers, discover the richness that awaits us. As Native Americans understand that no one owns the land, water, air, and earth, neither can one people own God's kingdom. Jesus doesn't think the way his disciples do, nor does he share their fear of the other side. Christ's net is cast far wider. His influence poured out way beyond the confines of the church. Throughout life, we encounter many, many unfriendly situations. For some, those situations are life-threatening. One that we all might remember is the fight to save the waters and indigenous grave sites from destruction by the pipeline to cut across their nation. The Standing Rock Sioux Reservation is situated in both North and South Dakota. And the people of Standing Rock, often called Sioux, are members of the Dakota and Lakota nations. Dakota and Lakota mean friends or allies. Since the Dakota Access Pipeline route near the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation was approved in July 2015, Tribal leaders have argued with public statements and court filings that their concerns about the pipeline were not adequately considered by the federal government. The pipeline was designed to cross through sacred burial grounds and pollute the water as it went along. They went largely unheard, and you saw it on TV, were treated with violence and ridicule by the government and the oil company. It was a very public showing of the kinds of mistreatment the nations are accustomed to and the ugliness that not knowing can bring about. Members of many American Indian tribes, indigenous communities, and their supporters gathered on March 10, 2017 in Washington, D.C calling on the Trump administration to meet with tribal leaders and protest, protesting the construction of the nearly complete Dakota Access Pipeline. The protest was partly led by the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, which had at that point been battling the government for more than a year. In drizzling rain and snow, people marched from the headquarters of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers which handled routes approved for that controversial section of the pipeline just north of the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation to the White House. Why is this of concern to us today? <coughs> Even in the midst of storms, God provides aha moments. When we recognize and deeply trust God's ultimate authority and power, Peace comes. With peace comes the realization that along with being in control, God also encourages us to get involved in social justice, doing more than handling a dollar to a homeless person. God urges us to do more than wave hello to our new neighbors. God expects us to learn about and learn from, and that's the key, People who aren't exactly like we are. And when our spirits and our patience sag, God gives us the grace to accept change and to move on, despite disappointment and fear. The Gospel reading today says, Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. We are called to take the gospel out into the world without setting up more boundaries, without judgment, without acting as if, as if we are better. From the beginning, when the Europeans invaded their land, the Native American has had to fight for its identity as a people. The church is a latecomer to that fight for equality, but 
Many Protestant churches have recently developed ministries that support the journey toward wholeness and inclusivity and healing. And the United Methodist Church, I'm proud to say, is a leader in that. We have United Methodist churches that are fully Native American and not always on reservations. One of the problems is we don't have enough Native American pastors to serve the Native American churches, so you still get a culture clash going on. Today is an opportunity for all of us to honor those gifts, the, the contributions made by Native Americans to our society. And at the same time, we are called to repent Repent for the way indigenous people have been brought near to extinction as a community. I did that DNA thing to see where I came from. No surprises there. Until my daughter started doing some searches. It showed that one of my relatives is John Smith. Remember John Smith? Jamestown. And I keenly feel my family's participation in the earliest destruction of Native culture, even taking Pocahontas back to England. It's far past time for me, for others, for repentance, and we do that when we follow Christ's instructions. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in His name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Not beginning from America, beginning from Jerusalem where Christianity first emerged. It's also a time for us to share, as I said before, with our offering. Um, not as a bribe so we feel better, not as a consolation prize for being Native American and not Caucasian, but as a way to actually work and help and become involved with this small yet very significant part of the United Methodist Church. To God be the glory. I would like to add one little footnote to what Pastor Bailey said. My mother was full blooded Monogan Indian. My grandmother and grandfather were full blooded. My mother was born on the reservation in Southern Virginia. Back, she was born in 1904. Back in the 1800s, 1900s, in Southern Virginia, there was no such thing as being born a Native American. You were not born an Indian. In Southern Virginia, you were either black or you were white. You were either a Negro or you were an American. My mother's birth records up until the 1950s, there were no birth certificates in those days. They went by census records. And up until the mid 1950s, her birth record showed that she was an American Negro. It wasn't until then, until the work through the tribes in Southern Virginia and the Congress in Virginia, that they got all those people that were born on those reservations, birth rights changed to Native Americans. This is a, a plight that has been going on for generations. And the donations that you give helps to educate the American Indian, doesn't matter what tribe they come from. It helps them to a better way of life, and hopefully, a better way for all races, regardless, to learn to live together.
I hope you will enjoy the beauty of some of the items that are here. Um, that's from one of my trips to the Dakotas in my younger years. I send you out into God's world knowing that it is a thing of beauty that has been created and given to human beings for our stewardship. Go and be a part of the love that came from God and share it with those in our neighborhoods, across the lands, and wherever we can with indigenous folks. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.